At first glance, it doesn't exactly look like a threat to a totalitarian regime, now does it? Bottles of rice thrown into the waters close to North Korea. But it's what's hidden in the rice, a small, possibly mighty weapon of hope. And it all has a Canadian connection. Half a world away in Halifax at Dalhousie University. Students on a campaign of enlightenment, you might say. Do you guys have any used USBs? Collecting tiny USB drives or flash drives on a mission to undermine North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. More on their potential potency in a moment. We work together on a lot of things. First, the student's and professor of international of development we studies, we Robert Hewish, with a lesson on what's really things. happening in North Korea right now. Kim Jong-un might appear to be tough, might be able to appear to truly intimidate the world, but inside, when you are trying to manage a country of 26 million people who are subsisting on under 1,000 calories a day, there's a lot of dissent. A crack in the veneer of a dictator's regime through which this man, Jung Gwang Il, and those students at Dal are trying to shine a ray of hope. Jung, a North Korean defector, travels the world over telling his story, his three years in a horrific political prison camp as a wrongly accused spy. These prisoners' drawings depict the hard labor, the torture, the starvation before Jung's eventual release. Now, more than a decade after escaping North Korea, he's come to Canada with his plea for help for his home country, famished for food, starved for truth. My goal is to enlighten the people in North Korea so that they can acquire the ability to bring down the uh, regime. I want to see the prison camp destroyed. I want to see that in my lifetime. There's an estimated 200 North Korean defectors now living in Toronto. People like Jenny, who still fears repercussions for her family back home, where her sister starved to death, her husband was killed for his political beliefs. She fled a few years back with their infant daughter. Inside North Korea, there is no truth because you are told from the government nothing else. They don't know they have the right as a human being. They should know they have the right and freedom. And so that brings us back to those USB or flash drives the students like Caitlin Murr at Dalhousie University have been collecting. So what are you trying to capture here? So basically we're just trying to show what an average student in Halifax would do in their everyday life where you're free to go about to the gym, the library or wherever you like. They document their lives in Canada and Anya Kapistanyak edits together small stories of what freedom really looks like, which eventually will be put on those USB drives and into those bottles of rice. I think it will be eye-opening and I think if there's something that they see is different than the North Korean life and the North Korean regime, then that's something to work for and strive for and realize, you know, this, I don't have to settle for this. Jung's campaign is predicated in the belief that the freedom of thought will set you free and ultimately silence a dictator. Kim Jong-un has missiles and you have USB cards. Uh, nuclear weapons are made by people and if we can change the of those people who make nuclear weapons it would be a, a revolutionary one that's why usb even if it's a small pieces is important the region fears most is the truth if the truth outside information is funneled into North Korea by way of USB, their dictatorship is disarmed. To some, it all may seem far-fetched, but there's evidence it's working. What we've seen happen is that fishermen, North Korean fishermen, will collect them, that they, they know the timing of the currents. And why do they do that? They do it for two reasons. One is that the distribution of, of rice is something that uh, is to their advantage, right? It's uh, food is, is scarce inside North Korea, but also most people in North Korea do question the legitimacy of the government. And so to have access to this media inside North Korea is tremendously powerful. And quietly, secretly cheering them on are people like Jenny, whose father she had to leave behind in North Korea.
After Kim Jong-un took over the regime a few years ago, the border control was tightened. Uh, it was pretty difficult to contact him, but for two years now, uh, there is no contact with him. Impossible now. Perhaps that point is best made from space. That's the Korean Peninsula. Notice something, that gap? It's not an ocean, that's North Korea. A country with little electricity, no internet, a people quite literally in the dark. And so this band of crusaders, Jung Wong Il among them, goes to the water's edge when the tides are just right. With their rice, a little American cash stuffed in for good measure, and those tiny, possibly transformational glimpses of the outside world so many take for granted. So you see, they are so much more than just bottles of rice. For some, they are the seeds of revolution. Tom Murphy, CBC News, Halifax.